Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm your host, Ellen Barrett. Thank you so much for joining us today. And with me now, I have Jeff Gauger, and he is the managing partner over at Beans and Cream Coffee House. And you guys are located in Sun Prairie, and you also have a location in the UW Hospital. Is yep. that right? Yep, the UW Hospital at the American Center, which is on the far east side of Madison. So it's Wonderful. a new hospital. Yes. This is one of my favorite topics because coffee is something I cannot start my day without. Definitely. At least not well. Good, for that matter. Good. We count on that. Actually, <laughs> yeah, so. so thank you for being with us today. Definitely, And thank so you. tell us about your coffee house, Beans and Cream Coffee House. Sure, so uh, Beans and Cream Coffee House is located in downtown Sun Prairie. It's the historic downtown part of um, Sun Prairie, which is nice. Um, we're a very busy little cafe. Yeah. We focus on sourcing our ingredients locally, um, making a lot of things from scratch, including a lot of our homemade syrups and stuff for our espresso drinks. Um, we also believe in being an active participant in our community. So we plan a bunch of fundraising events, work with other local organizations, all just trying to make Sun Prairie a better place. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to be a business in a community, but it's great to see when a business is so involved and the community supports businesses who are involved. Definitely. I think so. it's a win-win situation. Absolutely. Yeah. And now let's get down to the beans. Definitely. You guys have any specials coming up? Coffee uh, specials? We always have specials coming up. So um, actually next month we're looking at re-releasing our lavender honey latte. That was Ooh. very well received. Um, use local honey and it has nice lavender floral yeah. flavor to it. This is something I have heard of. I've never tried it just because it's so different. It is different. But I've seen it on menus at a couple different places now, mm -hmm. and it must be good if it's if it's that popular. It actually, uh, lavender for some reason works really well with espresso, so definitely try it. So, um, and actually next month we are going to be doing a Cuban latte. It'll be new to us, but we're making a, um, a natural sugar and organic cocoa nib syrup to go in that. So, um, nice and deep, rich flavors works well with espresso as well. So. Chocolate and coffee? Definitely. You can't go wrong there. Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. So tell us a little bit more about your local vendors that you guys use as well. Definitely. Um, so uh, probably our longest local vendor, we have a, a good partnership with Sassy Cow Creamery. They're uh, Wonderful. dairy up uh, about four miles north of us in Bristol, Wisconsin. Uh, we buy all their milk, um, half and half, all that kind of thing. And then we also serve a lot of ice cream. So we have eight different Sassy Cow ice creams at any given time. So in the summer, that's a big hit, especially in the afternoons, evenings. So um, we also get most of our uh, meats locally from uh, Twisted Oak. It's a farm up in DeForest in Oxford. Sure. Uh, local vegetables from McFarland. And then our coffee's roasted locally as well in Fitchburg, actually, True Coffee Roasters. Oh, wonderful. So, yeah. Very cool. And so if people are thinking, this sounds great, I need to come in, what would be, what you would suggest to be the first thing you should try when you come into Beans and Cream? Sure. Well, I don't think you can go wrong. I yeah. am a little partial though. So, um, <laughs> but I think if I had to just pick like one or two things, it would be to have a real vanilla latte. We make our own vanilla syrup using real vanilla beans. Um, it's really nice and flavorful. Um, and then also uh, we have a pretty large breakfast menu that we serve all day, but our regular breakfast burrito is a big hit. It has um, it's just eggs, bacon, cheese, and chipotle mayo, but it just a nice combination. Yum. So definitely so worth it. Tell us a little bit more before we go about your location in the UW Hospital. Sure. Uh, that's a newer location to us. Um, that hospital is just a couple years old. It's a yeah. state-of-the-art facility, uh, very, very nicely designed, put together. Um, we have a little kiosk there. Um, we focus on coffee, obviously, but on trying to keep it a little bit healthier. So we have a lot awesome. more sugar-free options, um, a lot of healthy food items there, that kind of thing. So um, serve a lot of patients and staff, but the surrounding business community comes in as well. So, so. Do you guys also have any events coming up at the coffee house? Um, a couple. So uh, this Saturday we have uh, um, a local musician playing. Um, she's going to be doing love ballads because it was February, oh, still perfect. is February. Um, we're also an active participant in downtown St. Perry events, and uh, there's a wine walk coming up in early May. Oh, and then love a, those. T yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, and a taste of some prairie in June. So. Oh, wonderful. So a lot of great things coming up. If you haven't been to Beans and Cream yet, a great reason to stop by. Definitely. Yeah, please stop in. Again, Jeff with Beans and Cream Coffee House in Sun Prairie, thank you so much for being with us thank today. Thank you. I All really right. appreciate it. And we'll be back with more Talk of the Town right here on Wisconsin's 57 Television after this. This celebrity interview is brought to you by Wisconsin Financial Services. 
Welcome back to Talk of the Town, and we all know and love our next guest, but what you may not know is that he, like many of us, was living paycheck to paycheck, even living in his car, before he made it big. Now, from his television talk show, radio show, books, and as a host of a variety of programs, comedian Steve Harvey has been giving us advice for years, and now he joins us live from Los Angeles to share some tips as we come into tax season. Steve, thank you so much for being with us today. Hey, Ellen, good to see you again. I've seen you so many times. Thanks for having me on your hit national television show, Ellen. <laughs> I love it. I don't know if I go that far, That's but I'll okay. take it. I'll That's take just the dream the dream. <laughs> Thank you. I love it so much. And now you've been giving us advice of all kinds of topics, yeah. every area of life. What do we need to know as we enter tax season? Well, I'm with a great company called Green Dot, and during this time of the year, they came up with a great program just like last year. If you have a tax refund coming, which many people do, it's a beautiful time of the year. We're gonna make, we're gonna make a move. We're gonna put a down payment on a car. We're gonna get a new outfit. We're gonna f go on a trip. But you can't do that without your money. So Green Dot came up with a great program uh, because if you're getting a tax refund, if you have a Green Dot prepaid card, you can have that tax refund. Uh, direct deposit it onto your card and you get it quicker than waiting on a paper check. Wow, and I know that more than 30 million refunds are expected to be delayed, so it sounds like that'll really help people get their money faster. Is that I mean, correct? You know, it's crazy, you know, we find that out at the last minute that all these people's checks are gonna be delayed and you want your money. I mean, this isn't money you're, you're asking for. They're not helping you. They're giving you money that you've overpaid. Right. And so, you know, if, 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 if you got this that's coming down from the government, it's already a slowdown, then you run the risk of the, putting it in the snail mail and anything could happen from there. That's another delay. Why not get it straight from the government directly into your account? You get an email or a text letting you know, ding, hey, your money's <laughs> here and you get it a lot quicker. Absolutely. And now, Steve, during those years when you were up and coming comedian, what was the biggest challenge when it came to your own taxes and how did you handle it? It was just knowledge, knowledge of taxes. I didn't have any. I didn't have a way to do it. So they got a, a quick way just for simple tax procedures. Go to greendot.com slash tax. Now, if you're in tax trouble, then you need a lawyer and a new jumpsuit. <laughs> Some great advice there. I appreciate that. And now, Steve, you are always busy and have a lot on your plate. I don't know when you sleep, man, because you seem to be doing so much. What are you working on now and where will we see you next? New show on ABC Primetime called Steve Harvey's Thunderdome coming out this spring. You're going to love it. Oh, my gosh. You are a busy man. Absolutely. <laughs> And finally, Steve, where can our viewers go for more information? Just go to greendot.com slash tax. Wonderful. Again, Steve Harvey, comedian, host of multiple shows. Thank you so much for being with us today in Madison, Wisconsin. Thank you, darling. Thank you so much, and we'll be back with more Talk of the Town right here on Wisconsin's 57 Television after this. This celebrity interview was brought to you by Wisconsin Financial Services. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. With me now, I have Carol Knight, and she is the owner of the Maple Bluff Antique Mall. Thank you so much, Carol, for being with us today. Well, thank you for having me. It is a pleasure. And how has the market for antiques kind of changed recently, maybe with prices or how people collect and shop in regards to the Maple well, Bluff there Antique are, Mall? Well, there are several things that have changed. First of all, the prices are way down. Sure. And there's a really good reason for that, and that is the advent of the internet. eBay especially has brought everything down. Sure. And what I tell people when they're surprised at that is I say, well, you know, you used to have to go from store to store to store to, to look for grandma's dinner set. Right. Now you sit down in your underwear and your fuzzy slippers and you type it <laughs> in and there's 15 of them. So the Market hasn't changed, the demand hasn't changed, which is not entirely true, but uh, but the access to that mar that that demand has changed, or the supply. Sure. And so it's supply and demand. The more there is, the, the lower the prices. Right. The other thing is that the collecting cohort has changed. Uh, people in my generation collected, people tend to collect what grandma has. Mm -hmm. Uh, we collected depression glass and things that our grandmother had. Well, my children's generation's grandma had 
Danish Modern and Melmac and Formica and Chrome, and so their tastes are totally different. Mm. And people say to me all the time, younger people aren't interested in antiques. Well, that's not true. It's just their idea of what an antique is different than what ours was, and right. it's a natural progression. Yeah, and that's that was kind of going to be my, my follow-up question. Do you think that's something that just it's just a part of changing in history and time? It is. is it, it will it's a natural to progression. Uh, the internet was kind of a kind of a slap in the face, a kind of a surprise. It's driven a lot of antique malls out of business simply yeah. because people come in and find what they want, and then go online and buy it instead of buying it from the mall. Right. Uh, so that makes a big difference. Right. Uh, but it's not going to change. I have people who tell me all the time that when the economy gets better, the prices will go back up. Uh-uh. Ain't going to happen. <laughs> right. And, and why do you think it is that people feel that way, or, or why won't that happen? Well, as long as there's an Internet, yeah. why would they? Uh, I, I tell my dealers all the time, no one's going to come in here and pay $50 for an item they can get on eBay for 15 mm -hmm. And if they do, they're a damn fool. Right, right, <laughs> right. And as always, we love to encourage people to shop local and support mm -hmm. your local businesses. So do you think antique malls, can they, can they make it through this period with the rise of the Internet? Or how do you guys operate moving forward? Well, we have to buy things at a lower price. Sure. And we have to sell them at a lower price. There's just no other alternative. Right. <laughs> the other thing is that an antique mall has one thing, one or two things over, over the Internet, and that is that there are real people there to talk to. Mm -hmm. uh, you can pick something up. You can feel it. You can feel the heft. You can sniff it. You can touch it. You can ding it. You can, <laughs> and, and you can see if there's a crack in it. Right. Right. Uh, you don't have to sit back and wait a week for it to arrive in the mail. But mostly I think it's the personal connection Absolutely. that makes the difference. And I think that as long as we're friendly and cheerful and honest, we'll make it. It's just we're never going to get rich. <laughs> and I think the stories I'm sure you get when you go to an antique mall versus, you know, maybe buying something off the Internet, maybe there's a story behind that piece that you mm -hmm. don't know about and you'd never learn unless you went in. And so many times I've heard horror stories about people ordering things on the internet. Sounds like a good purchase. But at the end of the day, because it's not a, a physical person there that you're interacting with, you don't know who that person is or if the picture they're showing you is the real picture or like you mentioned, well, a crack. Well, they acquired it honestly. Right. Now, most people on the internet and on eBay are perfectly honest. Yeah. Uh, I have a friend who spent over $10,000 on eBay and he's gotten taken maybe twice. Sure, sure. Uh, it doesn't make it any less, it doesn't make you any more, less angry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, th I think moral of the story is if you do have the means, take the time to stop in. Mm -hmm. Give it a try. See if you mm -hmm. like it. Exactly. Um, and I think shopping local not only benefits our local businesses, but our local economies as well. So I think that's the message we should leave folks with today. I think you're right. Thank you. <laughs> so be sure to stop by the Maple Bluff Antique Mall. They're really going to help you out. Some great personal service over there. Again, this is Carol Knight. She's the owner. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Appreciate it. And we'll be back with more Talk of the Town right after this. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. With me now, I have Brennan Nardi. She's the Communications Director over with the Madison Community Foundation. Thank you so much for being with us today. You're welcome. I appreciate it. And it is the 75th anniversary for your organization. Wow. So happy anniversary. Thank you. Congratulations. That is a huge achievement for you guys. Huge milestone. Absolutely. And for people who may not be familiar, tell us a little bit about your organization. Sure, sure. So we were established in 1942 mm -hmm. as the Madison Community Trust. And it was established by civic and business leaders who at the time wanted to support soldiers returning from World War II. Wow. Right. So um, a long time ago yeah, to, yeah. Think about, to think about that uh, and the folks in the community already just so generous mm -hmm. and, and thinking of, of returning soldiers and their families. Over time, um, it became uh, Madison Community Foundation in the late 70s mm -hmm. and really um, sort of... Uh, 
got a foothold in the 80s when uh, community and business leaders began raising money in earnest um, to support a variety of charities throughout the Madison area. So how does the organization work and, and help different organizations? Sure, sure, that's a great question. So donors, you, me, anyone, mm -hmm. um, you can give money, you can give cash, and you can give um, personal property, stocks, wow. mutual fund shares, uh, retirement plan assets. You can name the community foundation in your will or estate plan when you get to that point in your sure. life and career. Um, what we do is the community foundation builds endowments and we invest the assets from those endowments um, and the earnings and the growth that comes back. We um, Donors can choose to uh, advise the grants that they distribute from those endowment funds or they can trust MCF to use those resources wisely and give grants around the community. So what kind of grants are these and who are they going to? Sure, wide variety sure. of community impact grants they're called and the ones that the community foundation um, uh, gives grants to throughout the year are focused on so many different things in the Madison community from arts and culture to the environment to learning to education so yeah. and some of the things that you wouldn't think of that are so Madison really wouldn't be here but for mm -hmm. the generosity of our donors through the community foundation so Monona Terrace Overture Center for the Arts wow. um, you cleaning up our precious, precious lakes. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal right now, and the Community Foundation has been at, at really at the table working with the uh, organizations who were involved, including the Clean Lakes Alliance, to, mm -hmm. to, uh, to really push that forward. It's an important issue for the quality of life here and um, for our environment. Um, transportation for our seniors, outdoor classrooms, community schools. There's just, if you look around Madison, yeah. there's so much. Um, so much of it has been built really by philanthropy. Oh, I love that. And I like your point, you know, talking about things that are Madison, that we're like, you know, it's so Madison. It's maybe sometimes things we take for granted exactly. that have to be sustained if we want future generations to enjoy them as exactly. much as, as we did. So I think that's awesome. And now, like I mentioned, 75th anniversary. What are your plans as an organization to celebrate and commemorate this milestone? Great big plans. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to give a series of grants beginning in May. So we're going to announce one grant a month for 12 months. Wow. And these grants are going to go to nonprofits to support programs and projects that um, are going to make the Madison area an even better place to live, oh. work, and play. So a um, couple of the surprises in store, perhaps just sneak preview. So um, there's a big building that sits in the, atop the isthmus. So, yeah. Uh, and it's celebrating its 100th anniversary. So we're going to be doing some, some having some fun and celebrating and supporting um, the community around the, the anniversary. Um, we are a bike community, so mm -hmm. we will definitely have some projects around biking and kids and getting kids, more kids mm -hmm. on bikes and owning bikes and using bikes. And, oh gosh, just, you know, 10 <laughs> more. So to be in, you know, to, every month uh, for 12 months. So we're going to be oh. really busy getting the word out about the Community Foundation and we're excited. Oh, absolutely. And we're out of time, but quick before we go, if people want to get involved, how can they do so? Sure. Go to our website, madisongives.org. You can become a donor now, or you can become a donor later, and just check out all the events that we're going to be having going on around our 75th. I love it. Again, Brennan Nardi with the Madison Community Foundation. Thank you so much for being with us today. You're welcome. We appreciate it. And thank you to all of our guests, and thank you for watching today. You can find us next time on Talk of the Town on Wisconsin's 57 Television.